Welcome back. In this video, I build and install the vertical panels for the galley, and I do some calculations for the glassing of the daggerboard case to the galley. To make my bulkheads, I've decided to edge glue some ripped boards um, from my widest boards that I've got left, which is 150 wide, and here I'm edge gluing them on the bench before I put them through the thicknesser. Boards are all glued together, sanded, and now ready for glassing. It's proving to be a pretty efficient way to um, build up panels to make um, bulkheads out of. Well, efficient if you're not using plywood. When you make thousands of measurements, it's inevitable that eventually you'll make a mistake. I'm really bizarre I didn't pick this one up earlier made this cut here, it should have been about 50 mil that way. I'd allowed 25 to trim off. I was getting to realise I'd cut it in the wrong place, so it was all going so well. This first bulk here in my galley. No, wait for that. It's time consuming as it is sometimes to double check things. It's um, measure twice, cut once, that's the old saying. These clamps are not so great but they're um, not high pressure clamps, so having that move while I was cutting along that edge, which can happen, um, would be another way to invite a disaster. Pattern making and bulkheads going in. For the final fit, using a bit of sandpaper between the two surfaces um, is quite a good trick. The galley is coming along, got the middle bulkhead in, it's taped in, and I'm about to glue in the um, forward bulkhead which um, lines up with the front of the dag wood case and there's another bulkhead to go back here which will form the L shape for the galley. Some of you may have wondered what the curtains were about. Um, it's not fully closed but when I'm using the laser to level things um, of course too much light is a problem. This bulkhead is now glued in. Um, it's turned out quite rigid. It's um, looking really good. Um, what I'm having to think about now is because when the boat's um, on the port tack, this this will be under tension. This area, the top of the daggerboard lies about here, so there'd be a lot of loading in this area. Not worried about the compression, of course. But I'm a bit concerned about the um, tension and the initial area of um, tension will be at least 100 millimeters long, 150 millimeters long. And um, I'm wondering how many layers of um, biax I'll put around this corner on the trailing edge of the daggerboard case and on the leading edge, this, this side to give it a good safety margin and um, make sure that any shock loading is accounted for. So I'm going to do a calculation. I'll show you how I do it. Mechanical engineering is not my area of expertise. I do understand the basics and um, hopefully I've got nothing wrong here and I'm, I would be very happy if someone um, would correct my calculations. I can always add a layer of cloth to this um, area of the boat very easily down the line if it's looking like I underestimated the forces. Okay, so fiberglass strength is um, in the ballpark of 3033 MPA megapascals. Um, 
converted to kgs a cubic a square centimeter um, that's 30,927 divide that by 100 to give you the strength per millimeter square squared and um, and then I'm dividing it by two because it's double bias it's not uni so um, roughly only half the fibers are going in the right direction um, so that gives me 150 kgs a square millimeter the area that I'm dealing with is um, and I'm using 400 grams per square meter of double bias which is 0.4 of a millimeter thick when laid up um, so 150 long by 0.4 of a millimeter thick gives um, for the area I'm thinking of using as the um, reference for where the forces will go is approximately 60 square millimeters okay so 60 times 150 equals 9,000 kilograms of load before it exceeds its tensile strength the actual load um, of the area is um, and that's before the safety factor is um, my bulb is 240 kgs the distance out of the hole compared to the distance inside is roughly three so that's um, 720 kgs force on one end of the um, on one side of the dagger board um, that's all I've been calculating here it's um, 9,000 kgs divided by 720 gives a safety factor of 12 and I'm repeating that's for one end only so that far exceeds what I would have um, thought was necessary um, it's nice to know that there'd be such a big safety factor there even if it's um, only only calculated on a strip um, 150 uh, 100 long instead of 150 so please feel free to give me some feedback on this um, and like I've said if it looks like I'm under calculating things or someone's concerned and you do get a lot of comments on a lot of um, YouTube channels when people look, look like they're messing up so I'd welcome any feedback but it's great because I'm only having to add one layer there and um, I didn't want to have too many layers because I want the grain of the timber to show through. For the filleting, I'm using a mixture of 50-50 West System 410 and 411 filler. Um, the reason for that is because the um, 411 is um, a bit too white. It's what you normally use for filleting, but it's a bit too white and contrasts too much with the timber. So that's why I've gone for 50-50. It's um, easy to apply and easy to sand if this looks bowed you're not imagining it it was staying it's glassed on one side it was staying flat and then some rain came in for a couple of days the humidity went up and this timber polonia expands quite excessively when there's a bit of um, humidity or changing humidity it'll change shape um, so this is the last part of the vertical parts of the, the galley that I'm making Ooh. pretty flat relatively so I'll have to uh, get some glass on here or protect it from humidity or yeah it's tricky and by the afternoon it's all straight again this um, 
You almost wouldn't believe it unless you saw it. How this timber cools and straightens depending, depending on the humidity difference between the morning and the afternoon. The last vertical panels glassed up for the galley. I don't know if you've seen this method before. I hadn't till lunchtime today when I was looking up some videos on um, making carbon fiber bench tops. Um, the flame is supposed to heat up the resin so it flows a little better, it releases the bubbles. Yeah, in my case, um, it, the difference was marginal. Now this is a method I have used a lot before, going back quite a long way when I was building my 60 footer, um, using some epoxy thinner to break the surface tension and try and release some bubbles to flatten the surface a bit. And once again, it's probably the resin I'm using. All the vertical components are glued in. Place of the induction cooktop, insulated fridge box, and galley sink. Part two of the galley build. Um, I hope to have the carbon fiber bench top built next time. Thanks for watching.